and welcome back to Space Bomb 2. There's a new patch out, patch 1.9.0, and it's a big patch with a lot of nice stuff in it. There's a new ship, there's some new graphics updates, there's some faction balancing, there is uh, some AI balancing when AI is fighting against each other. And there's a buff, I would say, to the NPCs you have to shoot on the mercenary missions. There's a lot of stuff, but first we're going to have a look at the new ship perks. So prior to this uh, patch, if you wanted the perfect ship, you would actually have to go save and load and save and load and save and load until you found the ship with the perks you wanted. But as of this patch, you can actually change out your perks on your ship so you can get immortal you can get cooler drone booster cargo keeper holographic mirror and much other stuff they're, they're quite expensive five six million and as far as i see it doesn't matter which ship you take but you can change out all of them you cannot change out more than two the last one is the one you have to keep but it's nice that you can change the other two and get some you need but the engine burst is specific for this ship, so I have to keep that. Also, they uh, made it so that leveling up and adding tiers to the ship should be more balanced and should do more stuff. Unfortunately, you cannot see what adding a level will do, but it would be nice if you could actually see that. But, never mind that. When it comes to the ship perks, there's, there's a lot of different perks, but saving and loading won't change the ones on this station. So you have to go to another faction station and you can find other perks. On this station there's these five, but, but if you go to another station, you might find these one. Engine burst, dynamic drone maintenance, multi-missiles, or graphic mirror. Some of them overlap, but you do have to travel around to find the ones you need. Since you can't do the safe and load thing, you actually do have to travel around and visit the different faction hangars to see if you can get the one. As I said, changing the ship won't change the perk either. So there is that. And I guess it does add some immersion to the game that you actually have to travel to get the perks you want. They also balance uh, soldier XP, and that actually means you do a lot less damage if you're too low level. So killing high level NPCs will be really difficult, as you can see. Uh, normally I have been able to pretty much one shot every NPC I met with my sniper rifle. But now even a headshot won't always kill them in the first shot. And I guess that's okay, there was a... One could say, eh kind of an exploit using your sniper rifle to just pick off really high level enemies and pick up the gear and make a lot of money on that you still make some money but eh, it's lessened a bit or it takes a lot longer i guess that's fine um i guess you are supposed to fight the the guys you actually need to fight for the right level having said that you can still pick them off with a sniper rifle the bosses are there, i did fight a boss and pretty much just killing the shield was, uh, I wouldn't say it was impossible, but I ran, actually ran out of ammo before I actually killed the boss. So, yeah, you definitely don't want to go for really overpowered bosses, that's for sure. So the next part we need to talk about is the trading system, and that had a major overhaul as well. What he did was making the stack size of all the different commodities different. So, like, you can have 25 water in a stack, only 20 fuel, 15 weapons, 20 medicine, 15 luxury, and 10 robotics. That, of course, also means that you have to figure out if selling 50 water at a profit of, say, 10,000 is better than selling 10 robots at a profit of 20,000 or whatever it makes it so that it's not always just robotics you have to sell because it was prior to the patch that robotics was simply the best in the new patch you also get xp for doing you also get xp towards adventure for doing 
trading, which is nice because it's a nice way to grind up the, the adventure XP while making some money. And the gain you get is not too bad. But let's say we buy like 40 medicine, which is max. Uh, the orange line is half and the purple one is max. Max we can buy. It's not it's not really max we can have in the ship, but since we can only buy two stacks because we only have two cargo slots and the stack size is 20, we can only buy 40. So if we buy 40 medicine and we figure out where to go sell it, and we figure out that we have to go sell it in in Sapaxla because we'll make a nice profit. Was that the waypoint to do that? Also, I noticed that you have to take note of how much time is left before the reset because I've tried a few times buying stuff, going to a planet to sell it, and once I got to the planet and the time changed and they wouldn't buy it, so I had to go another place but anyways they want to buy some medicine in Sapakta so we are going there please approach to the jump point to start one thing I kind of noticed after the patch is that it seems like you pretty much always get to where you're going in one jump so once you get through the jump gate you will instantly be where you're supposed to be. Uh, I don't know. As I recall it, it was often two. Uh, it could be two or three jump points sometimes before the patch. But now it's just instantly where I need to go. It cuts down the time a lot on traveling, so that's nice. Go off a go to get some adventure XP. One thing that actually annoys me a little bit is that the trade hub is always as far away from the Stargate as possible, which sort of doesn't make sense. I mean, if you want to trade, why are you not placing your station as close to the Stargate as possible? It is feels like somewhat of a time sink having to go to the entire solar system to get to trade. But or at least uh, they could differ that so that some were close and some were far away, but it seems like they're just all at the exactly opposite side. That's a little bit annoying. So anyways, we're at the station and as you can see, we have roughly 10,000 adventure XP if we sell our stuff, which we will do. We lay, make a little bit of money and we also made 30,000 XP more or less so that's really nice it's a way to make money and a way to make adventure XP at the same time as you can see I'm really lagging behind on that so that's really nice they have also made some changes to the way you sell and buy down here so you can still you can sell as much as you want but they also made it so you can buy a thousand at a time which is nice because Prior to this, you could only buy a hundred, and you had to do it a lot of times if you wanted to make some money. Uh, I would like to see the daily production, the daily consumption and stuff working, but they're not working yet. That's Those are still placeholders that I'm guessing we'll see that in a patch soon. Same goes up here. There's still no changes up here, so it's really hard to see what you, what you make every day. It would be nice if you could actually transfer money the other way. Now, right now you can only give money to the treasure, but it would be nice if you could take out money from the treasure as well. But I'm hoping that will come at some point. They did change the Galaxy trade interface, and you can actually see the security if you want to avoid pirates, which would be nice because pirates are bad, and trade ships are really not equipped to take on pirates. And you can actually see the average galaxy price of stuff and if it's going up or down. Um, yeah, but you still have to do it within the 16 minutes or you risk everything changing. So that, there is that. It's still not possible to have weapon management or component management on your trade ship. I, I do find at least component management would be nice. You could 
buy some better shields, maybe some better a better war bench and maybe some more hull armor, maybe some more speed and stuff. But I'm hoping that will come soon. Or maybe in the next patch or two. We can have the drones, that's pretty much it. And those are nice, but it would be nice if you could actually upgrade your trading ship a bit. So the last thing in the trading part of the patch is the new ship. And it's called a Laircan. Now the Laircan is a, I guess, faster and more stealthy trade ship. It only has one cargo slot, so you can't have a lot on it. And it's, it's actually quite costly, but it's supposedly it's meant to trade around illegal goods once they um, once they do the dark web goods trading it's not in the game yet but and you can use this to just fly around and do some trading if you want but as for making money i'm not sure it's worth it just yet not at this price it's it's quite expensive unless you have a lot of money of course so the ship speed is a uh, thousand kilometers an hour and the wall speed is uh, 21 million which is nice if you compare it to the normal ship we have the uh, ship speed ship speed ship speed if you compare it to the normal ship it's the normal ship it's 399 and wall speed 5000 so it is a bit faster for sure uh, twice as fast inside the system and four times as fast or oh, three times as fast in warp speed but I'm not sure that makes up for the the lack of a cargo slot but as I said hopefully once we can trade in the dark goods it will be really nice so they added a new stars to the game and star sector should now have stars of different color um, I must admit, when you go into them and look at them, you, you can't really see that, but hey. So I'm not sure what impact that will have, but it's in the patch notes. They added some more nebula background, so the view when you fly around in system should be different. There should be more than 20 new nebula backgrounds. and. Yeah, it just adds to the atmosphere and it looks really nice. They also had a new planet surfaces. So different planets should have and the surface should align with how the planet looks from space. So this planet, I guess, should be have some, I don't know, mountains, some woods and maybe some snow. The planet itself actually has the brownish look and the rivers or water water bodies we saw from space and the atmosphere is grim and dark and gloomy. I mean there is some vegetation down here but it's not that it looked bad but it is a bit boring to look at so I'm looking forward to even more dynamic worlds and even more updates to the graphics on these worlds. Again, I'm wondering what modders can do once the game is released and the mod tools are available. I'm looking forward to the cities and camps and whatnot they can make and maybe even entire landscapes, that would be nice. So going around to a lot of different planets, you can clearly see that the atmosphere, the, the land, the terrain, everything differs from planet to planet, which is nice. And it did so before the patch as well, uh, although I pretty often came to just those really flat desert planets. And you still see those, but now at least the surface of the planet looks somewhat like how the planet looks from space and I do like that they did some minor changes to this screen where you can actually see the money and XP you get for the different 
mercenary and looking for pilot missions. It's just a minor convenience, but it's nice all the same. Now the last part of the patch is pretty much about factions. And they made it so that factions gain experience, level up, get better soldiers. If you played the game a lot, you'll see a sudden jump in some of the factions, so they will be harder to beat now. When I logged in, my pilot level was 22, but I've leveled up a bit, and so have all my soldiers. And actually, House Seragon, uh, that's the house I actually took some systems from, leveled up as well. So now the average soldier level is 20, rather than the 19 it was when I logged in. So the level up gets stronger and harder to beat, I guess, which is nice. They also added, they also sped up the combat speed on AI versus AI battle when player is not involved, so it should be twice as fast now. I haven't tried it because I'm not in a war currently. They also made some small changes, so if you set, trying to set a an attack target, uh, you can actually click up here and you'll get back to this page. Just a minor nice thing. The last thing they did was they added a battle force value to the fighting side, so you have a clear review of what is actually happening when AI attacks your base or you attack a base, I guess. And that value can be tracked in real time while the battle unfolds. As always, there's a lot of bug fixes, bugs that play actually poor it, so if you're playing the game, remember to report your bugs. There's still plenty of bugs left, but I'm really impressed by his ability to make a lot of content for each patch every Friday and to iron out all the bugs they are actually ironing out every week. I'm guessing that by this pace, this game, you won't be able to recognize this game in a month, yet alone two months, three months, or four months. And I'm really looking forward to see what it can all become. And I'm really, really looking forward to see what happens once once you open up for the mod tools and the modders get their hands on. Also, I want to say a huge thank you for the likes and the comments and the views on my last patch video. It really helped me out in the algorithm. And if you found this video helpful or informative, or you just want to support me in the battle against the dreaded YouTube algorithm, please leave a like, leave a comment. So that's all for now, and thank you very much for watching. See you next Friday.